Hey, what's up guys? Nuno here. In this video, I'll show you how to create realistic materials in Lumia. I will explain the different texture maps and why they are necessary to get realistic results. And also, how to add extra detail with displacement maps. So, let's get started. So, to create correct PBR materials, you need the right textures for it. So I usually get my textures from Quixel or Polygon and uh, here you have the bridge and if you download it then you'll be able to have this software where you can see all the types of 3D assets, surfaces, decals, imperfections, displacements, all of this. The surface that I use in the beginning of the video it's this one and you can see it here. It looks very similar to what I did inside Lumen. And in the download settings, you have the texture resolution and all the maps you can use. So I select the albedo, displacement, normal and gloss. So this albedo, it's basically the same as diffuse, but it uh, doesn't have any shadows and highlights inside the texture itself. Um, and this is nice because for PBR materials, when you have the displacement map, for example, this displacement creates some geometry and this geometry will create some shadows as well. And so it's better to have a albedo like this without any shadows inside the texture itself. So, and this is the displacement. So you can see that in the displacement, you have all of the dark areas will, will be lower and the white parts will be higher. And you can even see that you have some of the wood veins as well here in this, this displacement. Now, we we'll also have the normal map, so the no normal map will be basically the bumpiness of the texture. And then it, we have the gloss map, and the gloss map is basically how, shininess, how shiny the, the texture is. So the lighter part will be more shiny, and this part, really, really dark, will be almost with any shininess. And we need to put this texture in the normal map, and to do this, for example, here in Photoshop, you can just press Ctrl A and we'll have these marching ends. And then we press Ctrl V, go to the normal map. And here, let me just remove this. Here we have the texture like this with the, the layers. And then here on the side, we have channels. So here we'll create on this button to create a alpha channel. And then we'll just press Ctrl V. Okay. Now, we need to save this either as a target file or a TIFF or DDS. So it saves our alpha channel. I'll leave it as Targa and just save as 32 bit. Because if you don't save as 32 bits, it will not have this alpha channel. It will not save this alpha channel. So just pay attention to this. Just press OK. By the way, I have a video where I speak a little bit more about Quixel Mega Scans. And I'll give a link to it in the top right corner and in the description below this video as well. And now here inside Lumion, I'll just select the material and now I'll create a standard one and I'll choose a color map. And for color, I'll choose the albedo. And I'll remove this colorization because Lumion by default puts this gray color. So just remember to always remove it. I'll increase the scale a little bit. About here it's fine. So if you notice, you already have here some bumpiness, right? And why is this? Because Lumion creates the, by default, when you import a, a albedo or a diffuse, it creates automatically a normal map from that. But it's not the most, the most accurate. So let's just remove it because we have our normal map. And now I want to show you how this texture looks, if we just leave like this exactly. So let's just render it out. So you can see that this texture looks almost like a mirror, doesn't look anything like wood texture, right? So what we need here, we need a normal map and a gloss map. So let's do this, let's go here back and let's select the normal map with the gloss map on the alpha channel. And now 
we can see that this texture looks much better. We don't have any of this glass like reflections. Uh, just leave this at one because it already has the correct uh, gloss, glossiness and reflection in the texture. So just leave it as it is. And then the relief as well. And now let's uh, render it again so we can see the difference. Okay, let's first have a look at the before and after. And as you can see, we now have all of this uh, bumpiness in the texture. We can see the wood veins, all of the boards you can see clearly, and even the nails. You can see the, the, they have a lot more glossiness than the, the wood itself. And we can even have some dirt here, some, some surface imperfections. So it looks much more realistic, this one. But we can even add one extra detail here. And let's see. With Lumion 10.3, now we have the possibility of adding our own displacement maps. And to do this, we'll go here, choose displacement map, and select the displacement. And so this displacement will create the, the, the geometry, will raise a little bit the geometry, and it will create this effect that you will see now. So here in the displacement, I increase, see, if I go all the way up, okay, you can see the difference, especially around here in these areas. So you see, if I don't have any displacement and if I increase it, looks much better now. So let's take a render with this and see the difference. So now if I show this a normal map and now with the displacement, you see how all of these um, boards, you can see clearly the difference in height between them. So it gives you really this extra realism. By the way, I have a Lumion render course. There I'm showing you all the techniques I use to achieve high quality renders with Lumion. I'll leave a link to it in the description below this video. Now let me show you another material here. So if you go here outside, we have this wall and we can select here exactly the same process. You can go here and materials. We have uh, this plaster. We have the albedo, the displacement, and put this larger. So we have the albedo, the displacement, gloss and normal. So I already did the same here. I put the um, gloss in the alpha channel of the normal map and I inverted the green channel of the normal map. And so if I import this, so let's remove the colorization and increase the scale. Let's see about uh, here. Now, if we add the normal map, let's go to the correct material. Okay, you can see the details of this bumpiness. If I remove, it's completely flat. But if we increase it back, you can see all of these details on the texture. So let's put it back. And now let's add the displacement. So I'm going to increase and you can clearly see this illusion here when the starts creating this geometry, see? So if you leave it about here, now let's go to render. So now you can see here in the render, already a preview how it looks. And if I render out, so you can see how nice this material looks. We have uh, all of this detail, little details from the plaster. So it's really nice to have these displacement maps. It really gives this extra realism to the, to the textures. Now, ah, one more thing. Let me just show you. If I decrease here the light, <coughs> about here. 
And now let me add some light. Maybe this one. Let's make it about here. And let's move it, put it on high, move it about here and target here. Could be. Okay. Now So if I now move this slide, you can see all the shadows of the texture. See, remember that this is basically a, a plane, nothing else. But you can still see all of these small details. And it all comes from the normal map and the displacement map. If I go back here now to this texture, and if I remove, so you see that even with this, uh, this displacement map, if I remove it, this area here doesn't have any shadow, right? But if I increase, okay, you can see that all of this area is in shadow. So this displacement map, it's even creating uh, some shadows. And this is why it's uh, important to use the albedo map instead of the diffuse. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I'll leave the links to get the textures in the description below this video. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumb up, subscribe and click the bell button to get notified when my new videos go live. See you in the next ones.